The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. There's wonderful eating in every pound of Kraft's new parquet margarine. You like new parquet because it always tastes so fresh and appetizing because it spreads smoothly even when ice cold. And now Kraft has more good news for you. With every package of parquet you buy, you can order a pair of famous Powers Model nylon stockings at half price. I'll tell you more about Parquet Margarine's sensational offer on Powers Model Nylons in just a minute. It's funny the changes that take place around a house the minute the family gets a dog. Since the great Gildersleeve's cousin Bert sent him a Great Dane from Canada, a six-foot fence has grown up around the backyard, the flower beds have taken a beating... And there's a tunnel under the house foundation for storing important bones. Sometimes a dog leaves these pleasant surroundings and wanders away from home. He just won't stay home, Mr. Gill. See, that dog's been gone all day. Where's Leroy, Bertie? He's out after that dog. He jumped that six-foot fence. Leroy? No, sir. That dog. Oh. He jumped that six-foot fence. I never saw a dog like that dog. He just won't stay home. Well, I wonder where they are now. That dog's out chasing something, and Leroy's out chasing the dog. Well, I thought that fence would hold him. Oh, no, sir. That dog rears up on his hind legs and looks over that fence just as big as you please. Oh? Next thing you know, he's gone. If you want to keep that dog home, you'll have to put a tent over the backyard. No, Bertie. Yes, sir. If you're going to keep that dog home, you need a tent over the backyard. Yeah, all right, Bertie. Mr. Gilsey, you know the only way to keep that dog home? Yes, Bertie. That's Bertie. right. You have to put a tent over the backyard. <laughs> well, I guess a big elephant like that could use a tent. Now get up in the house and don't come out. Oh, Leroy found the dog. Leroy! All right, I'm soon to finish telling them off. Go on, slink under the house with your tail between your legs, you big bum. Leroy, you shouldn't talk to the dog like that. I've got to teach him a lesson, Unc. I want him to realize what he's done. Now, what did he do? He's been chasing Mr. Peavy's cat. Well, I didn't know Peavy had a cat. Well, it's an old stray that hangs out back of his store. Oh, that one. Yeah, the one with the crooked tail. Yeah. Mr. Peavy thinks a lot of that old stray. He feeds him and everything. He even gives him vitamins. Hey. Oh, my goodness. You think I should go down and apologize? Yeah, I'll stop by Peavy's in the morning and tell him we're sorry. Gosh. You suppose Mr. Peavy's really sore? Well, I wouldn't worry about it, Leroy. It's natural for dogs to chase cats. I don't imagine Peavy's offended. You don't know what happened. The dog chased the cat in the back door just as Mr. Peavy was coming out with a box of empty bottles. Oh? The cat ran between Mr. Peavy's legs, but the dog couldn't make it. <laughs> he, he might be sore at that. Yeah, lucky this morning. Nobody's in the barber's chair. I think I'll pick up shade. Hello, Floyd. Oh, hi, Commish. Like the fellow said when the tide didn't come in, long time no see. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. How about a shave, Floyd? Hop right up in the chair. You're my first customer. Yeah, you're all right. Yeah. yeah, good. I always like to work on a friend first thing in the morning when my hand's a little shaky. <laughs> uh, Floyd, I wish you'd do your practicing on yourself. Not me. I never shave till 11 o'clock when I'm sure I'm awake. What a barber. Fasten your safety belt. Here comes the hot towel. Ooh. You want a shave that'll carry you through the night or just until 5 o'clock shadow time? Make it close, Floyd. Hey, uh, you must be stepping out with that classy Mrs. Ransom tonight. Well, I hadn't given it any thought. Wait till the sun goes down. You will. You'll come out of the woods like a big... You want another hot towel? No, that's enough, Floyd. My wife, Lovey, saw your Savannah siren in the beauty parlor the other day, but she didn't recognize her. Oh? She was wearing a mud pack. Commish, have you ever seen her in mud? 
Of course not, Floyd. If you got any serious intentions, you ought to look into these things before the knot's tied. <laughs> Well, I'm in no hurry, Floyd. First time I saw Lovey with her hair and curlers and her chin in a sling, I nearly jumped out of our contract. <laughs> Floyd, do you mind getting on with the shave? I have to stop by Peavy's before I go to the office. Oh, sure. You having breakfast with the Peave? No. Our great Dane's been chasing his cat, so I thought I'd go over and apologize. Oh, yeah? Why should you apologize? Well, Floyd, the dog shouldn't have been down there. There's a leash law. The dogs aren't supposed to roam the streets, you know. But cats can, huh? Well, yes. How about that? You have to keep a dog off the street, but every alley's full of cats. Hey. Well, I hadn't thought of that. Dogs ought to have as many rights as cats. It's a free country, ain't it? Yeah. Goodness knows I've tried to keep them in. I built a six-foot fence. And what's the peeve done to keep his cat in? Nothing. That old Tom just sits over there tempting your dog to chase him. <laughs> Peavy's the guy that ought to apologize. <laughs> Lloyd, what do you have against Peavy? Well, I don't think he should keep a cat which upsets a good customer like you. Oh, so that's it. Besides, he bought one of them new gadgets and cuts his own hair now. Oh. What can I do for you this morning? Peavy, I understand our dog has been chasing your cat. Mr. Gildersleeve, that's not a dog. I thought it was Seabiscuit. <laughs> Seabiscuit? I rode him from the back door all the way out to the front. Oh? My cat ran between my legs and the dog tried to follow well, I heard about that, and I've come to apologize. Well, that's very nice of you, Mr. Gildersleeve. These things do happen. Yeah, but it's nothing to break up an old friendship. Oh, my, no. <laughs> Something amusing you, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking how funny you must have looked when that dog tripped you up. And <laughs> you with an arm full of bottles. Yeah. <laughs> well, it wasn't funny at the time. Oh, I'd have given anything to see that. <laughs> now, come to think of it, it isn't funny now, is it? Well, Peavy, it wouldn't have happened if you didn't keep that old crooked-tailed alley cat. Mr. Gildersleeve, I'll thank you not to call Chester an alley cat. Oh, come now, Peavy. He's just an old stray. He is not. I knew both his father and his mother. <laughs> got a lot more sense than some dogs, I know. No, well, Peavy. Let's not go comparing him with a full-blooded Great Dane. Well, just keep him on a leash, Mr. Gildersleeve. That's all I've got to say. Just keep him on a leash. No, oh, wait a minute. Let's not get tough about this. Who's getting tough? Just keep him on a leash. If you felt this way, why didn't you say so when I came in here? What are you, mealy mouth? Speaking of mouths, I know a water commissioner who has too much lip. Phoebe, <laughs> don't get personal. I know a druggist who'd look better if he didn't cut his own hair. Speaking of hair, I know somebody who gets in mine. Well, I'll get out of it. I may never set foot in your store again. And you'll regret it. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. You home, Mr. Gillsleeve? Yes, Bertie. Leroy's been asking about you. He's anxious to find out what Mr. Peavy had to say. Well... Peavy had quite a lot to say on the subject. Yes, sir. But you fixed everything up, huh? Yeah, I fixed everything. Uh-oh. What happened? Well, I went in to apologize. But one word led to another until I was saying some things I shouldn't say to Peavy. Yes, sir. Hi, Unc. Hello, Leroy. So you and him <laughs> had words, Mr. Gitsy? Yeah. It was all my fault, Bertie. Who had words? Mr. Peavy is pretty upset, Leroy. But the dog... He's not upset with the dog. He's upset with Mr. Gillsleeve. Yeah? We'd better try to keep the dog away from there. First thing we know, somebody's going to pick up that dog and take him to the pound. Oh, Mr. Peavy wouldn't do that. Well, I've never seen Peavy angrier than he was with me today. I think he might even send me to the pound. Yes, sir. First thing we know, that dog's going to end up in the pound. Peavy reminded me of the leash law. What's that? Dogs can't run loosely, Roy. If they get loose from the leash, they're liable to end up in the pound. Gosh, what's a pound like? It's a jail for dogs, boy. Mm, no, Bertie. 
I can see that poor dog sitting in his cell looking through them bars right now. Please, baby. That poor dog sitting behind the bars waiting to get bailed out. Gosh, Unc, what are we going to do? Well, we can't teach the dog not to chase cats. No, sir. Dogs chase cats every day. It's when people get mixed up in it. That's when the fur begins to fly. <laughs> now Bertie's upset with me. Leroy, we just have to start training the dog. Not to chase cats? No. We'll try to make him understand when he goes out, he has to be on a leash. In fact, I think I'll put him on a leash and walk him down to Peavy's to show we intend to do the right thing. Swell, Unc. I want to do whatever I can to stay on good terms with Peavy. Mr. Gill, please. Yes, Bertie. Ain't you and the dog going to eat lunch before you go? No, when we get to the drugstore, we may split a banana split. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Will that be all, Mrs. Ranson? Well, that's all for now, thank you, Mr. Peavy. I'm tempted to buy a box of that candy, but Throckmorton usually keeps me supplied with it. You might give him a hint when he comes in. I gave him a hint this morning. You did? To stay out of the store. What's the matter with you and Throckmorton? There's nothing the matter with me. <laughs> Why, Mr. Peavy, you're so cute when you're angry. Well, I seldom get this way, but my cat has been chased once too often. Gracious! Has Throckmorton been chasing your cat? <laughs> no, it's that great Dana here, you big bully. What's that? That's Chester. You okay? I had to bring him inside on account of that dog. Oh, well, now that Throckmorton knows how you feel, he certainly won't let that dog come around. He's very nice. Well, hello, Leela. Throckmorton, we were just talking about you. Yeah, I can imagine what Phoebe would say. <laughs> Hello, Peavy. Now, nah, fully. Close the door. <laughs> well, you said not to stick my foot in here, so I'm just sticking my head in. Now, close the door on your head. <laughs> I declare, you two aren't getting along. Peavy, this is silly. I just came by to assure you that everything's going to be all right. You don't say. Your cat has nothing to worry about. Look, I've got the dog on a leash now. Come on in, dog. Hey, Mr. Gildersleeve, don't bring that dog in here. Peavy, it's all right. Throckmorton, Mr. Peavy's cat's in here. Oh? Mr. Gildersleeve, I brought my cat inside to keep him away from your dog. Hey, stop worrying, Peavy. I've got the dog on a leash. <coughs> don't worry, kitty. Oh, mercy. Mr. Gildersleeve, if you don't take your dog out of the pharmacy... Oh, you steady, dog. You're not to stop pulling. Oh, you can't hold him, Throckmorton. Oh, leash broke. Run, Chester. Come back here, dog. <coughs> Dog, you get out of my patent medicine. Oh, Zeke. Oh, oh, somebody do something. Run, Chester, run. Dog, you can't climb no shelves. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, did they run out the back door? Well, I don't know, but I'm running out the front. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will return in just a moment. How would you like to get a beautiful wardrobe of nylon stockings at half price? Kraft makes this remarkable offer to urge you to serve new parquet, the wonderful margarine that spreads smoothly even when ice cold. Every time you buy delicious parquet margarine, you can order a pair of nylon stockings at half price. Luxurious first quality Powers model nylons, the kind that were designed for America's cover girls. And instead of paying the regular price of one dollar and a half, you pay just 75 cents when you send in the yellow end flap from a package of parquet margarine. These full-fashioned Powers model nylons are sheer and durable, 51 gauge, 15 denier. Their flexible top assures a smooth, perfect fit. And their tapered heel makes ankles look slimmer. You have a choice of two popular shades and either a dark seam or a self-color seam. A famous testing laboratory compared these Powers model nylons with other leading makes and reports them equal in quality and durability to nylon selling regularly at a dollar and a half. But you can get them for just 75 cents plus the yellow parquet package end flap for each pair ordered. Complete ordering instructions are given inside the parquet package. Get Kraft's Parquet tomorrow, the delicious margarine that spreads smoothly even when ice cold.
pal. Let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. If you have a pet that doesn't get along with a friend's pet, chances are you won't get along with the friend. Anyway, what with Gildersleeve's dog and Peavy's cat, the old friends aren't so friendly. I've always been very fond of Pete, but he's become very unreasonable. What happened this time, Unc? Well, my intentions were the best when I took the dog down there in a leash. But Peavy was foolish enough to have his cat in the store. Uh Uh-oh. Could I help it if the leash broke, Bertie? So that's why the dog came home smelling like cough syrup. (laughs) Well, he did break a few bottles. That's when Peavy threatened to call a lawyer. Now, I know that dog's headed for the power. Yeah? Unc, if Mr. Peavy gets a lawyer, can we get a lawyer for the dog? Well... If that dog goes on trial, he's sure to win, because nobody can look sorrier than that dog. Yeah, he's a sorry dog, all right. He's a swell dog. Unc, why didn't you and Mr. Peavy make up? Well, I've tried, my boy. Next time, try going in without the dog. As far as I'm concerned, it's Peavy's move. If he doesn't value my friendship, I don't want his. Oh, Unc. Come to think of it, he hasn't much of a drugstore anyway. Not now, at least. <laughs> Mr. Gillsleeve, is it going to cost you much to fix the place up? It only amounts to three or four dollars, Bertie. I told Peavy I'd drop around and pay him. What did he say, Unc? Well, he won't let me. Oh, that's nice of Mr. Peavy. No, he said he'd rather take the loss than have me come in the store. <laughs> come on, Unc, let's call him up. Now, Leroy... I'll dial him and you talk to him. Yeah, I doubt if he'll even talk to me. Come on, I want you and Mr. Peavy to make up. You're fellow jolly boys. Well... Peavy's pharmacy. Go ahead, Unc. Hello. Peavy, this is Gildersleeve. Well, I'm glad you called. You are? He's glad I called. I've decided to let you pay for the damage after all. Twenty dollars and sixty cents. Oh! Pulling dog. Oh, no, you don't. You're not going to break this leash. I hate to put a chain on you, but it's better than being locked up. Stop pulling. Heel. <laughs> That's what you are, a heel. Chasing cats. Uncle gets into enough trouble without you. Let's sit down here on the curb. I want to have a talk with you. <laughs> Why don't you behave yourself? Why do you have to keep running away from home? We feed you, give you a warm place to sleep, and you're not even grateful. Ah, stop licking my face. I'm serious. If you don't want the dog catcher to get you, you better straighten up. Don't look at me like that. You're not that sorry. Well... Maybe you are sorry. You're not such a bad guy for a dog. Is that you, Leroy? Hi, Mr. Ransom. I've never seen such a forlorn picture. A boy and his dog just sitting and looking off into space. I've been giving him a lecture. Oh? Tell him about all the trouble he's caused. If he doesn't watch it, Mr. Peavy might get the dog catcher after him. (laughs) It wouldn't surprise me if Mr. Peavy sent the dog catcher after your uncle. Yeah, he's pretty sore at Unc. Gosh, I'd sure hate to lose the dog. Ah, oh, no, sit still, boy. Oh, well, I, I don't think you lose the dog. I don't know. I tried to get Uncle and Mr. Peavy to talk to each other over the phone, and they got mad at each other all over again. Leroy, I think this fat's gone far enough, don't you? I sure do. I think it's time Leela brought a couple of gentlemen to their senses. Oh, boy, would you? You come over to my house about 3 o'clock. Your uncle and Mr. Peavy will be there. They will? I'll phone Mr. Peavy and have him make a delivery from the pharmacy. And then I'll call your uncle and have him drop by. Well, how do you know they'll come? Leroy, you're just a boy. But I assure you, when Leela calls, they come. <laughs> A little early. Yeah, I didn't want to miss anything. I wondered who was at my back door. Me. Oh, come in. Thank you. I'm serving tea later. Would you like milk? Okay. 
Oh, that must be Mr. Peavy. I, I didn't want him and your uncle to arrive at the same time. Heck no, you'd never get them in the house. Excuse me, Leroy. Sure. And good afternoon, Mrs. Hanson. Hello, Mr. Peavy. Well, hello, Leroy. Hi. Uh, come in, Mr. Peavy. Mm, thank you, but I'd better get back to the pharmacy. Here's your package of sundries. Oh, yes. Uh, would you mind bringing them inside and putting them on the table? Well, they're not heavy. I'll bring them in. Leroy? Oh, I get it. Uh, uh, just take them in the parlor, Mr. Peavy. Very well. Uh, now, let me see. If I can find my purse, I'll pay you. Oh, I've already put it on your account, Mrs. Ransom. Oh, well, I want to pay this in cash, Mr. Peavy. You just wait a minute. Oh, now, where is my purse? Everybody look for my purse. Mrs. Ransom, aren't you holding it behind you? <laughs> so I am. I'm getting so rattlebrained. <laughs> Hmm. Gracious, I don't seem to have any money in my purse Well, I, I guess I'll have to charge it after all Well, that's perfectly all right with the pharmacy Yeah, goodbye, Mrs. Ransom, Leroy Are you going? Uh, uh, Mr. Peavy, before you go, would you do me a favor? I'm glad to Well, I've just been waiting for some strong man to come along and help me move my piano I want to put it over on the other side of the room Way over there? Well, let's try it there. And if it doesn't look right, we can move it down to the other end of the room. Something told me to stay in the pharmacy. I wonder who that can be. Yeah, I wonder too. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Peavy. Very well. Hello, Leela. Rockmorton, come in. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Leroy and a friend of yours were just moving the piano. Well, getting ready to sing? I'm not singing with you. <laughs> Peavy, I didn't know you were here. I'm just leaving. Why, Mr. Peavy, you can't leave now. Yes, I can. Now, you just stop that pouting, you cute little old man, you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let him go, Leroy. Now, go and I get good and ready. <laughs> You two boys, just stop acting up. Well... Oh, stop growling, you big old bear, you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, now I know what they mean by wrapping men around their fingers. Now, where do you want the piano, Mrs. Ransom? Oh, well, let's leave it right here, since you two have made up. Who's made up? Not me. I don't understand two old friends letting a dog and cat fracas come between them. Mr. Peavy, aren't you ashamed of yourself? Stop staring at your toes and answer me. Right. And you, Throckmorton. Well, I, perhaps we should shake hands, Peavy. Well, there's no use losing a good customer, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put her there, Peavy. Oh, boy. Now everybody's happy. Yeah, you're acting like a couple of jolly boys again. You bet. Peavy... You remember those old Jolly Boy songs we used to sing? I'm here to tell you. Hey, Leela, sit down at the piano. Peavy and I'll show you how singing should be sung. All right. What will I play? How about there is a tavern in the town? In the no. Town. No, <laughs> Peavy. Yeah, how about smiles? We're all smiling now. Mm, well, I'm not trying to get along with Here we go. There are smiles that make you happy. There are smiles that make you blue. There are smiles that steal away the sunshine as the sun beams steal away the dew. Take it, Peavy. There are smiles that have a tender meaning that the eyes of love alone can see. We're all together now. But the smiles that fill my heart with gladness are the smiles that you give. Why, George, that was great. <laughs> what was that? No, I, I tied the dog up outside. I didn't want him running around chasing your cat, Peter. My cat's outside, asleep in the car. <laughs> oh, was asleep. <laughs> I'd better get out there. Peavy bringing your cat was a silly thing to do. Well, even a dumb bunny ought to be able to tie up a dog. Oh, here we go again. All right, let's hurry, Leroy. 
I'm sure the dog chased the cat back to the drugstore. Gosh, Mr. Peavy took off in his car so fast he didn't even give us a ride. Well, this would have to happen just when Peavy and I had made up. What do you suppose he'll do if he catches the dog? Well, I guess you couldn't blame him if he did send him to the pound. He'd probably already called the police to come and get him. Yeah, let's turn up the alley. Yeah. Hey, look, Unc. Uh-oh. Peavy's got our dog all right. What's he doing to him? Oh, my goodness. He's sticking a bandage on his nose. Peavy, what did you do to our dog? Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Are you going to send him to the pound, Mr. Peavy? No, Leroy. The dog can come around here as often as he wants to. Yeah? But I doubt if he wants to. Oh? <laughs> he finally caught up with the cat. <laughs> well, that'll teach him. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Next time you're shopping, pick up a pound of Kraft's new parquet margarine. On the package, you'll see a truly remarkable offer. A chance to get famous Powers model nylon stockings at half price. They're 51-gauge, 15-denier nylons and guaranteed first quality. And you can get them for just 75 cents with the yellow end flap from a parquet package. Get packed parquet tomorrow. Kraft's delicious new margarine that spreads smoothly even when ice cold. Yeah, Floyd's at the piano already. Hello, Floyd, Peavy. Hi, Camus. Well, good evening, Mr. Jonestine. Right, George. It took a good dog and cat fight to get the Jolly Boys together again. <laughs> How's the pooch's nose? Oh, yeah, well, fine. I got the dog tied outside. Where's the chief and the judge? Oh, we got all the good voices here. Let's start singing. Oh, yeah, Peavy. Sure, let's warm up on Old Mill Stream. Yeah, all right, great. Here we go. Down by the old mill stream Where I first Fellas, we never sounded better. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Good night, folks. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Lauderman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White. It is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Arthur Q. Bryan, Jack Meekin, Shirley Mitchell, Pinto Kalvig, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Good cooks know that the fresher the salad oil, the smoother the French dressing. The fresher the cooking oil, the better the cake. And now Kraft Oil is guaranteed to reach your kitchen as wonderfully fresh as it was the minute it was bottled. That's because Kraft Oil, and only Kraft Oil, is sealed with an airtight vacuum cap. Get Kraft Oil tomorrow with confidence that it's the freshest oil you can buy. Tonight, play You Bet Your Life on NBC.